In Onshape, you can use helixes and sweeps to create geometry. Let's take a look at doing that. Before I create a helix, I need to have a cylinder in my model. Let's create one. I'm going to select this plane, and then I can hold down the right mouse button to create a new sketch. Let me then hold down the right mouse button to view normal to my sketch plane. Let's create a circle, and I'm going to locate the circle right at the middle and then drag it out a distance. Let's use the dimension tool in order to put a diameter on that. I'll use a value of 25. That looks good. Let's hit the check mark. Then I'm going to take that circle and extrude it. And I will select the profile that I want, the face of the sketch. And let's do it to a blind depth. Let's use a value of 200. That looks good. Let me hit the check mark to complete the extrude. I will use the keyboard shortcut of P to turn off the display of the planes. To create a helix, you're going to use this icon. Beware of that from the drop down list. There are a number of other different kinds of curves that you can create, including the 3D fit spline, projected curve, bridging curve, and the composite curve. And so for the helix, when I hover over it, you can see the tooltip where it prompts me to select a cylindrical or conical face or a circular edge. Then I can specify the pitch or the number of turns, direction, and start angle. Let's choose the command, and I will pick the cylinder that I created. You can see a preview of the helix that would be created. If we take a look at the interface from the drop down list, this is where I can choose whether I want to do the turns, the pitch, height and turns, height and pitch, or turns and pitch. It's up to you. I will use turns for simplicity. And right now we have four revolutions. Let's change that to eight. You can see how it increased in density. And you have a drop down list where you can choose whether this is going to be clockwise or counterclockwise. Let's keep it at clockwise. And we have a start angle of zero degrees. Let me find where the start is. There we have it down there. And so if I change the value here, it's going to shift the helix around the part. Let me change this back to zero. I'm happy with that one. And everything looks good for the helix. Let's hit the check mark in order to finish it. Now let me turn my plane display back on using the letter P. I'm going to create another sketch on the plane called front. I'll get to the command from the right mouse button. Let's also view normal to the sketching plane. And let's create a sketch of a circle. And I'm going to let it snap right into the edge of the part. Let me then go to the dimension tool. And let's drag it out over here and let's use a value of 6.25. Then I will hit the check mark. Let's turn off the planes again using the keyboard shortcut of P. And now we can create some sweeps. To create the sweep, it's this icon. And so first off in the dialog box, I'm going to create a solid. And I have it set to be creating a new part. That's good for the faces. Let me select that little circle. And then the sweep path, that's where I'm going to select the helix that I created. And you can see a preview of the geometry that is going to be made. Let me hit the check mark for a second. And here you can see how it is in the model. Let me then select the sweep and edit it. Let's take a look at some other things that we can do. Right now it is set to add. It is adding the material to part one. If I change this to new, it's going to create it as a separate part. And here we have, let me hit the check mark first. And so you can see this one. Let's hide part one so that we only see part two. Now I can go back to the sweep, right click and edit it. You can see that there's another option in here to keep the profile orientation. So right now, as the sweep is being created, it is normal to our trajectory at every point along there. If you keep the profile orientation, it's going to try to keep this face essentially in this orientation along the whole way. Let me choose that, and if I choose that, 
you can see that the geometry turns red because it's trying to keep it again sort of like parallel to that face as it's getting to the sides and it's just not working so let's uncheck the option to keep that profile orientation that looks good let's hit the check mark and so in that way our sweep looks like a spring let's hide part two and bring back part one and use the same geometry for creating another sweep let me turn on the display of sketch two again let's go to the sweep command i will use that circular profile and then for the sweep path once again i will select the helix and this time we are going to remove material and that'll end up creating a cut in here let me hit the check mark and you can see in this particular case at the beginning and the end it doesn't slice completely through the cylinder because the helix starts and ends at the top and bottom surfaces of the cylinder if i wanted to go all the way through well i'd probably have to create some other additional construction geometry and create the helix on that and then that construction geometry i would make it longer than the cylinder part that i wanted to cut with this let's take a look at one more control playing around with this let's go back to sweep to right click and edit and instead of remove let's change this to be an intersect and then hit the check mark and so now we have another kind of spring but it's got a funky look to it you know again it's sort of like half of the spring shape without the coil circular shape on the outside so there you can see how we use the helix in conjunction with the sweep in order to make geometry i hope you enjoyed this video for more information please visit www.creowindchill.com if you learned something from this video please give it a thumbs up and if you like this video please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded thank you very much